no one better to review this review than the distinguished chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Congressman Mike Turner from the great state of Ohio. He is also a member of the Oversight Committee. Chairman Turner, welcome to Cudlow. We appreciate it. Larry, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me this afternoon. Yes, sir. So we got a bunch of things to cover, which is right up your alley, I think. The first one, kind of just uh, this chip wars, chip wars with China. Front page of the Wall Street Journal today. All right. Um, Joe Biden says he's going to restrict, if I get this right, he's going to restrict Chinese access to U.S. cloud computing services, companies like uh, Amazon, especially Microsoft and Google. China, on the other hand, is saying... Uh, they're going to put a curb on the metals uh, that are used for the chips um, for these very same purposes or other purposes. Um, so I can't figure out which is which, and I can't figure out how this is going to end. And I also, Mr. Turner, can't figure out whether the Bidens are going to be tough enough on this chip war. Well, I can guarantee you they're not going to be tough enough because there's not a thing that China has done where the Biden administration has responded accordingly. Uh, but, however, this is very, very serious, and this is where the rare earth materials, that, that there's fights going on with China trying to corner the market and that could exclude the United States from having access. At the same time that we're ramping up our own domestic production where we're like looking to onshore to bring back to the United States critical um, you know, capabilities, high-end manufacturing, uh, what we need to do is make certain that, that we're, we're playing in the game. One, that we're holding China accountable, and two, uh, that we're ensuring that we have access to these materials around the globe and certainly in the United States. And, and of course, the Biden administration has been very slow to allow us to even pursue those rare earth materials that we have right here. But, you know, uh, Mr. Chairman, let me raise this point. I mean, the Bidens can say whatever they want to say, but the reality is their Interior Department, their Energy Department, their EPA. We just had a decision by the Bureau of, uh, of Landmines, okay, to restrict land eligible uh, for mineral resource um, excavations. They don't want us to do it. Whether it's, you know, replacing uh, batteries for electric vehicles, nickel and copper and things of that sort. Um, so why would the Chinese believe us when our own agencies are preventing it. Uh, you probably know, I mean, up in Minnesota, in the Iron Range, for example, we are mineral rich. All the stuff needed for batteries, probably stuff needed for chips, probably stuff needed for strategic, technologically, you know, advanced chips. But we don't do it. So why should the Chinese believe us? Well, and as you know, Larry, when you, when you start restricting our access to it, you also restrict future exploration. So th there's not even a great accounting, a great understanding of what resources that we have here. And it certainly gives China the upper hand. Um, and certainly it makes us dependent, which is unfortunately the end result of the Biden administration's policies. Uh, these need to be reversed, and we certainly need to both stand up to China and make certain that we're pursuing our own natural resources. I mean, they're sending uh, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen over there. What is she going to do? What is she going to say? You know, she's one who always talks about climate is an existential risk. Uh, I don't know where you come out on that. I don't happen to believe that. But the point I'm making is, what is she going to do? I mean, if we're in the middle, we are engaged in an adversarial relationship. I think you would agree with that, Mr. Chairman. Um, Absolutely. We don't Absolutely. act like that. I mean, stuff we do at home doesn't support the fact that we have to deal with China as an adversary, as an enemy. Well, President Xi stood next to President Putin and said, we're bringing about change that has not happened for 100 years. But we all know that's World War I and World War II, and that was the fight against authoritarianism and democracies. This administration does not view the express words that came out of President Xi's mouth, uh, that he believes that he's in a, a battle between authoritarianism and democracy, and that they believe this time they win. Mm. All right. Let me move on to another one. Now, you have written a terrific piece. I read it. Um, or at least I read the synopsis of it, for the Ronald Reagan Institute regarding strategic defense initiatives, what was at the time called Star Wars. I was actually there as a young man, deputy in OMB, when he launched that back in 1983. Um, so, China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran, all right, boy, that's a witch's brew right there, all of them, terrible authoritarian, dictatorial enemies of the United States, you're writing that they're trying to figure out ways to nuke us, the United States. What are we doing about it? And I want to add as a subheading here, you know, Democrats have opposed this every step of the way. Even 40 years ago, when Reagan first came up with it, people ridiculed. 
I think they still are. You know more about this uh, than I do. But where's, you know, Mr. Sam Nunn, former Senator Sam Nunn, is still around. We need a lot more Sam Nunns from the Democratic Party. There should be a bipartisan effort to protect the United States uh, from these rogue, dictatorial, communist countries that want to kill us, destroy us. Absolutely. Uh, you know, on the left, their philosophy has been we don't want missile defense because if we do, it'll make others want to build more nuclear weapons. Unfortunately, we've not done missile defense, and that's exactly what others did anyway. They built more nuclear weapons. Uh, not only was uh, North Korea not nuclear at the time that Reagan called us to, to this challenge, and Iran certainly didn't have a, a nuclear weapons program, but China is tripling its nuclear weapons pointed at the United States, and we're not even raising the bar as to what our missile defense capabilities are. Now, we have the technology. We worked with Israel to deploy it. Israel has proven that it's cost effective. It works. It's de escalatory. We need to pursue this. Well, what? It's just talk to me about the debate, the discussion. All right. You're on the Intel Committee. I don't know. Are you on um, appropriations or defense services. appropriations? I'm okay. on armed services. All right. So there you have yeah. it. What is the what does the other side say? Other side of the aisle? Don't they get the point? The other, the other side. You've got. Let me just yeah. repeat this. Your headline here. This is home point. China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran. All right. Now that's a great cocktail party. Can you imagine having a beer with that group? Now, why can't people figure out that we have to do something to stop them from destroying us? Right. Well, on the left, they really believe in that nuclear that uh, that nuclear weapons in themselves are deterrents. That the more that the country seeks more nuclear weapons, that they really had to, have no intention to use them. And they believe missile defense itself is provocative. That that's the provocative step. I think it's provocative when someone makes another nuclear weapon and puts it in a silo port of the United States. They think it's provocative when we build a missile defense missile and put it in the ground. Well, I would think so. Is there any hope on this, uh, Mike Turner? I mean, what do you think? Is We're pushing, and I think I, I think. I think that the tide is turning, and I think we can make some headway. I think, uh, you know, you're talking about it really helps because it gets the word out. You know, people need to understand that we are not building out what we need, and the United States needs protection. I mean, you know, like I say, they ridiculed Reagan, but Reagan was right. He was dead right. I always love to say Reagan was right because I love the guy because I worked for him. Uh, I was 15 years old at the time, as you can imagine, but he was right. So I was so happy to see that you wrote this for the Reagan Institute. Um, last one, Mr. Chairman, I, I want to go to the, um, to the Biden scandal stuff and just ask you, you're on the Oversight Committee, uh, all these committees, Oversight, Judiciary, um, Ways and Means, are going to go back now. I think they're going to subpoena, if I have this story right, they want uh, transcribed interviews. They want depositions, in effect, under oath from all the various players, including the U.S. attorney, Weiss, uh, who wrote a letter last Friday night that nobody read, or you hope nobody read, but it's a non-denial denial of uh, letting Hunter Biden off easy. So what is your take? It seems to me the evidence is mounting that there's money laundering, there's influence peddling, and there's bribery. And I want to add, Mr. Chairman, um, Hunter Biden's the fall guy, but Joe Biden's the guy in charge. Uh, Claudia Tenney mentioned that to me on the radio this weekend, and I think it's quite a good insight. And I just wondered what your take is on this. Sure. Well, I think uh, Chairman Comer is doing a great job, as, as is uh, the other committees, in putting together the case. We don't have all the pieces yet, but what the pieces are, that are there show is activity that clearly looks uh, as if it's the type of, of activity you'd see in a criminal enterprise. Um, and, as, you know, Speaker McCarthy makes this point frequently. Imagine a, a family business that makes millions of dollars that sells no product and that conducts itself in a manner that looks a lot like money laundering. Certainly sounds like there's more to investigate here, and it certainly shows, I think, that there's there's real trouble in the Biden finances. Jamie Comer was here with me on set, I don't know, last Wednesday night or Thursday night. Uh, he's doing a great job, as you say. Um, he said he's going to go back now to more of these Treasury suspicion activity reports with respect to Burisma. Uh, that could be the straw that breaks the camel's back. What you think? Uh, yes, I'm on the committee, and I think he's doing a great job in following the, uh, the money flow. Uh, and as that leads to the Bidens, that leads to more questions. All right. Mr. Chairman, Mike Turner, we appreciate you coming Thank on you. the show. Thank you, sir.